all right everybody it's time for another video uh it's been a while sorry uh been very very busy doing stuff and uh not a lot going on in uh you blue land other than bazite most of us are in maintenance mode right now and just shipping every day so um i've been gathering information on how people are using bluefin and things like that and Baz, I just recently ran a survey, so we decided to run our own survey. You'll find a link to the survey in your terminal when you open it up, or you can always just go to feedback.projectbluefin.io. I'll make sure I link that uh, below in the comments. So today, it's summer. At some point tomorrow, uh, you'll get the summer wallpaper will rotate in, and this is it right here. Here's the nighttime mode. I got my hat and everything. And we're in a savanna observing the dinosaurs and all that stuff. So... Um, we put together a quick survey. This is anonymous. Um, and I we only have 47 responses, but enough of there's enough good stuff in there for me to generate a video. And I just don't have time to answer each of them um, uh, individually and write them out on the forum. So uh, this is what you're going to get. And then uh, hopefully we can do this regularly and get um, uh, sort of help explain one of the th one of the things in the uh, survey was like, I wish you would explain how you ended up in this, you know, making that decision. Um, and it's kind of a tough ask to ask people to go watch a year's, two years worth of old videos. So uh, I'm going to go through the survey. The survey is anonymous. So uh, I not really interested in collecting uh, your emails or your names or anything like that. Uh, and the survey will always be open. So if six months from now you find a thing or something and you want to give us feedback on uh, it's always there. And then um, I read every single entry. So I'm going to show you the charts and all that stuff. And then for the individual responses, uh, I'm actually going to um, uh, not show all of those, but kind of group those into buckets uh, to to kind of uh, address some of the major points that people are having. Uh, so with that, the first question I ask is, which Bluefin do you use, Bluefin or Bluefin DX? Uh, I was surprised by this one. Um, I know that DX does meet a need uh, for certain people, but I wasn't expecting uh, such a developer heavy thing. You know, now it makes sense. Sure, it's a Linux. Uh, but uh, I found this interesting. Uh, so 61% of you are using uh, Bluefin DX, and uh, that is pretty great. Uh, what kind of hardware do you run Bluefin on? Um, and then we let people f uh, fill it in. 44% desktops, uh, frameworks. Uh, 23 percent that's that's pretty good that's one of the most uh, exciting parts i believe of bluefin is our partnership with framework if you view on aces uh surface laptops we don't have as many people using surfaces as i would like um and i know this because when there's an issue with surface we get a bug filed and um it's it's very difficult for us to investigate that uh, without anyone on the core team running a, a surface device so if you are out there and you're on a Surface and you know how to Linux, we would love uh, more of your uh, input. Uh, a bunch of laptops here. No surprises there. More laptops and desktops. That seems to to fly uh, with what you are uh, uh, with. You know what we see these days. Lots of laptops out there. What kind of GPU on your primary device? They're kind of. This is a lot more even uh, than I was expecting. Uh, I was ex usually when you see these things especially for, you know, PCs, uh, DGPUs are usually like uh, overwhelmingly NVIDIA. And then iGPUs is usually like Intel or AMD because that's what, you know, comes on laptops. So um, I thought that was interesting. My main question that I asked, uh, this is the one I care about the most, is uh, how maintenance-free Bluefin has been for you. And for most of you, it generally has been uh, less less maintenance. And that, that makes me happy because the entire point is I got I, – I ain't got time to deal with my computer. Um, how likely are you uh, to recommend Bluefin to a friend? And most of you will. This is encouraging and also frightening at the same time. So thank you for that one. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm just gonna read off some of these here and then kind of just talk into the mic uh, while you check out my desktop. Well, let's not make myself too big. That's a little narcissistic. All right, there we go. Um, so I asked what the number one thing is that people like about Bluefin. A lot of you like the dinosaurs, which I found surprising. Um, one of you said, I love how Bluefin just works seamlessly as my first distro. Uh, I like that a lot because I feel that systems like this are good for people who don't have preconceptions of what Linux is supposed to be. So we can teach you the right way right off the bat instead of having to unlearn the bad habits. Um, 
the offloading of management to the core system to opinionated experts. I'm really glad whoever wrote this, thank you so much because the value that we see is um, us sharing the maintenance together and having someone who's an expert in that thing, being able to deal with that and then being able to ship that to everyone else. So I'm really glad uh, some of you are picking up on that because that's, that's the main reason uh, I use this. I think a lot of people um, talk about the individual choices that we make uh, around the software and things like that. But generally speaking, it's, you know, I want experts to make my OS for me. Um, one of you said Olama, Olama Web. Uh, that is something that we've been adding uh, lately is uh, more local AI things. I'm a huge Olama fan and um, I've been using a lot of Alpaca, which is a small little GTK app on Flathub. Uh, that just connects to our local Olama instance, and then you get your uh, your chat GPT, except you're not paying for it. And you get all the latest models, which is fantastic. Um, someone's really happy that automatic updates uh, never break anything, which isn't technically true. Uh, usually, uh, we, we try to decouple the updates from the actual payload, so sometimes you do get an issue, um, but that reliability of the update mechanism is is what we are focusing on uh and that's that's always good um super convenient setup use immediately love the pre-configured all-in-one updates yeah that's that's really great uh someone likes the containers uh i think the team behind bluefin or Bazai doing a great job i've learned a lot of the stuff you guys and gals come up with on github awesome that's that's why we do it that way uh Plus, helping us grasp the concept and use of containers I've never really understood before and introduced me to cool tools like Tixis and BoxBuddy. What a great combo. I'm glad you all are digging that one. Sent and forget same defaults, install it and use it. Um, a lot of that stuff. A lot of you digging you just as well. Um, and then what I want to spend, let's see, I'm a few minutes in, but I want to spend some time on the frustrating things about Bluefin uh, because this is very interesting to me, you know, having been on these systems now for like, year three I'm on, uh, you know, trying to understand how people are, are getting on here. Um, the first one, this should, this is probably everyone's number one complaint, download size. So I'm happy to report uh, after coming back from Red Hat Summit, I was able to meet with uh, the teams at Podman, uh, Dan Walsh and Giuseppe, uh, sorry, I, I forget uh, his last name right now, have been working on Z standard chunked, um, which is a way to push the container into the registry and have it compressed well with Z standard instead of GZ on how they uh, are now. And they've been working on this actually for three or four years because this is kind of something that needs to be put in the Podman and the whole stack. And you had to make sure that Docker, the client works, right? Because this is a, an OCI thing. So in order to do this work, they're not doing it just to make uh OS tree enabled containers work. It's kind of a whole industry uh, wide thing. So the good thing is, is Podman and Docker, the last few versions that have been shipping in the uh, wild for a while now, all have the feature that they're able to pull Z standard co compressed images. It's just up to us to be able to generate Z standard compressed images. And I'm, I'm doing that in testing. Now, what we're waiting for is RPM OS tree and boot C to get backported to have them be able to support uh, pulling all that stuff. That work is in progress and that work has been uh, really moving fast um, in GitHub. The uh, github.com slash containers slash storage is where you can follow along. They even tag their commits with like a chunked colon so you can follow along there. But yeah, totally get it. We've been waiting years and years for more uh, efficient downloads and things like that. And hopefully that will um, make it make it a lot better. Uh, and then maybe in the futures container diffs also, um, I don't know, but, uh, the team at Red Hat is targeting this and trying to get this into Fedora, uh, by Fedora 41. So it, it's, um, I'm watching it very closely and I can't wait to, to do that. Someone asked not using DNF or being able to install and configure things easily. Distro box is not an end all be all also not having real docs. I'll get to the docs in a minute, but, uh, the DNF thing is quote unquote, going to be fixed where they're writing a DNF plugin to boot C. So you will just DNF install and it'll just do whatever it is you want. And then you'll be able to use a lot of the DNF ecosystem there. So hopefully all the DNF commands on those, on those websites, like you don't have to, 
you can just copy and paste it now instead of just like trying to translate that to an RPM OS tree install command. Um, so Bootsy will be handling the image stuff and then the DNF plugin will be kind of doing that for you um, as well. So you should be able to do that. And of course, uh, I'm gonna continue to recommend to just stay in image mode. Uh, and that's always gonna be the default for us. But there are use cases, like those of you with VPNs and stuff, it's, it's a pain in the ass, right? You gotta copy over that repo file by hand. That sucks. So um, let's see. Someone, uh, Some of you asked uh, about compatibility with Nix. There's not much we can really do about that there. Um, you know, Nix kind of conflicts with SE Linux and some of you uh, have been able to figure it out. I don't personally, you know, after our experiments with Nix, it doesn't really solve a problem that we have, you know? So if you want to use Nix, feel free to use Nix. Um, but we're just going to recommend what we have because you know, I kind of have everything already. Um, here's an interesting one for D DX. Someone was a, the VX code experience with DistroBox. Um, I, people ask me about, about this. Um, and that's just not something we support. Uh, VS code and dev containers is our default pattern because trying to connect VS code to distro box, it's just a bunch of jank. I know you can see a bunch of posts there on the forums, uh, people struggling with it. I don't understand why people are trying to connect their distro boxes uh, to VS code when you could just use a dev container. Um, but you know, uh, if someone wants to continue going down that rabbit hole, um, we're not really investing in, in, into looking at that. I think we want most new people getting into containers to start with dev containers so that they don't end up um, in a bad situation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the documentation. I'm going to get to the documentation here uh, now, actually. Some of you are complaining about the documentation, which I found uh, was a surprise to me uh, because most it's really designed to not be special enough to need documentation. Obviously for things like Bazite that include all these gaming tools and their UJust files are like way longer um, than ours and things like that. Um, that does need uh, more documentation. We kind of designed the desktop to only need the two pages, which is the introduction to Bluefin um, and then the administrator's guide to Bluefin. So if, if you left back what what exactly you would like to see documented. I will be very interested in knowing um, because usually for a lot of these tools, um, you know, we pick them and then uh, the reason we pick them is they had their own sets of documentation. So uh, just, just to set expectations, we don't really have like a documentation team other than like a handful of people. So you're never gonna see like the Bluefin guide to learning dev containers or, you know, the Bluefin guide to using this or whatever. Uh, mostly I'm just going to send you to the years and years of v, uh, dev containers, documentation and videos made by other people. Um, I mostly try to mirror just what you would use in any operating system, except you would skip the install part, you know, for that stuff. Um, and as far as some of the other documentation around system maintenance and all that stuff, part of the reason we picked you just is a lot of the tools upstream and things like that are always moving. So, you know, we, we don't have complete documentation you know, the, the entire rebase guide or all of that stuff, because that stuff doesn't really uh, exist in Fedora. And generally speaking, we're designing for um, zero maintenance. So if you are interested in documenting those stuff, um, that would be great. But generally speaking, I'm kind of documenting for the 90% um, and not the 10%. Uh, so hopefully that answers that. Now, if I could snap my fingers and say, let's have awesome documentation, it's all working magical. Um, that would be amazing. As far as the presentation of the documentation, uh, we did used to have it on a traditional doc site, but no one really read that anyway, uh, according to the metrics. So we're using the forum because that at least gets a ton of traffic. Um, however, we we do want to fix the presentation of the documentation, right? Docs should just take you to a site that's generated from those discourse pages and perhaps organize a little bit better um, with a search bar and all that stuff. So the presentation of the docs could definitely something that really annoys me. Um, and I want to fix there. Uh, let's see what else, what else upsets people? Um, let's see more docs, more docs. Some of you really love homebrew and the people who don't like homebrew are pretty, um, adamant that they don't like homebrew, but you know, it is what it is. That's a uh, design decision uh, on our part. Um, Layering packages, sometimes the sets other tools can installs easily. Another thing that help us get rid of this layering thing is system D version 256 released last night, actually. 
um, and that gives us support for system B system extensions, which is a feature that we've been wanting to investigate as a, so that we can uh, provide things uh, to you all without needing to layer and doing uh, complicated things. Um, no promises on that. That feature literally just landed and it's in Rawhide, so it's not even in Fedora yet. Um, so that'll be a while, but we're hoping to be able to offer more things as system extensions instead of separate images and things like that. Ideally someday, DX on Bazite and Bluefin is the same. It's just like an extension uh, that you lower in. Um, someone was asking about coexisting with other operating systems. This is something we inherit from Fedora. Uh, you can't, can't really share a disk easily with Windows or another OS. Uh, and that's just something that I always recommend is, uh, is don't share disks with different operating systems. One per is the way to go and boot from the BIOS. That way, no one's stepping on anything and then uh, you're good to go. Um, I would, I'm very interested to in seeing if uh, Fedora uh, will get there at some point, but I am not sure. Um, update size again, let's see. Da, 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 da. A, lot of, a lot of you having problems with uh, NVIDIA. 555 is in beta, so hopefully that will solve a lot of your problems and probably introduce a bunch of new ones. Um, let's see, large sizes again. Uh, some of you are asking, learning where and how to install programs. So really that's kind of why I default to homebrew and flat packs. Um, if you kind of color outside those lines, you tend to be on your own. Um, so that's it. The, the person who's uh, frustrated that your key, your password manager and your browser are two flat packs and they can't talk. Uh, for that one, we're waiting for a portal uh, in, in flat pack to be able to do that. And that should help solve that. That's kind of not our problem to solve. Uh, let's see. Some of you are asking about uh, GNOME upstream and you don't like a lot of the modifications. I do have instructions in the introduction of Bluefin document that shows you how to turn it off. Go into extensions manager. You can turn off all the extensions. Um, and then you can do a deconf reset, which I recommend doing on a clean install. So you're not losing any of your custom shortcuts and it'll look exactly like Fedora, um, other than the wallpaper, I think, but the layout and all of that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Someone wants Ansible in the image. I don't know about that one, uh, but, uh, that's an interesting one. And the last question I asked is, or two things. Uh, what do you feel is missing from the developer experience? How am I doing on time? Uh, tooling wise, uh, someone wanted automatic one, 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 one. That's, that's another Olama web UI. We're definitely interested in adding, uh, more quadlets that give you that kind of awesome web UI experience for things like Olama. Uh, but that's still early days. Someone's asking about a clear distinction between Bluefin CLI and DistroBox uh, versus Homebrew on the host. I think by now we're pretty much all in on DistroBox uh, on the host for most users. Obviously, you can always use uh, DistroBox and Bluefin CLI. I'm probably going to start to hide that a little bit more unless you're really like a container nerd uh, looking to use it. That's never going to go away, though. So if you use it, you know, I still use it, of course. Um, some of you are, someone was very interesting. They go, it'd be really nice to install NeoVim instead of Vim. Just brew install NeoVim and you can get all the NeoVim stuff and you always get the latest version. Uh, usually way faster than you can get it from a distro. Uh, let's see here. Most of you seem to be pretty happy. Um, so, uh, and then the last question I ask is anything else we should know? I just throw in a random thing in here. Uh, I think these are pretty funny. Here, someone's like, I want merch. I would love to have all sorts of dinosaur hats and shirts and hoodies and all of that stuff. Um, but we gotta, uh, we gotta get a lot of other stuff uh, sorted right away. A lot of you really love uh, the community, uh, which is amazing. I'm really proud of how friendly you are, are towards each other and uh, respectful and doing doing the business. That's that's always good. Um, a lot of, lot, lot of you with NVIDIA problems here, uh, but mostly positive feedback that uh, really makes me happy. For you red hat out, red hatters out there, someone said red thin when, wink, wink. Um, and a lot of you saying thank you and all of that stuff. And one question, I want to address this real quick about um, Bazite and Bluefin kind of sharing, sharing stuff, right? Like some of you are like, I really want a game, but I'm also a developer, right? And 
We're working on Bazite DX, which will be more gaming focused for development, um, but totally understand the, I don't understand why I can't have like the developer experience from Bluefin DX, but I'm also gaming, right? So ho hopefully that's a thing that we can sort out with system B system extensions, make those things more common. So you don't need to have a separate image to get a lot of this stuff. And I think that will really help a lot. And we also need to remember that a lot of this stuff was organic, right? Like Bluefin was around for a very long time before Bazite. You know, obviously if we were to start over from today, we would be building everything out of one mono repo and just having separate artwork and things like that. Um, but it does, it does kind of cover different use cases. And I game every day uh, on Bluefin, even though I'm using the Steam Flatpak also works great for me. Um, so I don't really feel a need uh, to get all that, you know, hardcore gamer stuff, I think. Um, uh, but that, that's, that's a, you know, it, it will only get better from here, I guess, is where, where I'm trying to get at. So, um, I will leave a link below to the feedback. And if you want to go ahead and start filling it out, uh, that would be amazing. Other than that, hoping to keep this, this vibe going of, uh, you tell us uh, what you're using and, and what you feel, and then, uh, we'll give you the feedback. So other than that, have a great day. I will not be making as many videos as I, as I can. Um, you know, we're heading into conference season now. I'm going to be heading to Hong Kong for KubeCon China and every, um, you know, my travel is, is kind of ramping up here. And generally speaking, a lot of things in Bluefin in particular are feature complete, right? Like, you know, once we get our updates, really it's more about cranking up the version numbers, uh, every six months and kind of leaving it how it is, which is like what I want. Right. Um, there's a few other things that I do want to do that I want to put on your radar is, um, we are investigating using uh, the CoreOS kernel for Bluefin in particular. Um, this is just a Fedora kernel that's gated a little while longer by the CoreOS team. Uh, and it's the exact same Fedora kernel uh, that you get. It's just a little slower. Uh, one of the reasons I want to do that, especially in GTS, is Fedora's kernel cadence is like really aggressive, which is awesome. Um, and we really like a lot of that value. So if you're on Bluefin colon latest, we'll probably keep you on that. And if you want to get that latest stuff uh, from the latest version of Fedora, it's fine. But for my work machines, I prefer a little bit of a slower cadence. And I want to do that for two reasons. A, I really want to dog food what that kernel feels like to just be one point release behind. Um, and they release a kernel every month. Uh, and I want to see what that feels like, uh, you know, and, and how it works out in practice. And number two, I've said this in, in, a, in a lot of places. I would love to see someday a model where, uh, Fedora looks like CoreOS, right? Where it's like stable, next, uh, and testing, right? And then the actual number is the user space and not as user visible to you. So if I could snap my fingers and get better documentation, but also rebuild silver, blue, and Kino white upstream on top of CoreOS and get that continuous delivery model, um, that would, that would really be awesome because then that gives us a lot of, uh, places where we can insert automation in, in the, um, uh, in the build pipeline. Right. So I'm kind of really excited about that. Talking to, talking to a bunch of people uh, about that in Fedora and things like that. If you're asking Red Hat summit was uh, fantastic. We did a talk. I have the slides up somewhere on the forums, um, had a lovely dinner with some folks in Fedora and that, that, that was, um, that was really fantastic. So Longer video than usual. I told myself I would do them shorter and more often, but that's not happening. So thanks for sticking through the end. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know how you're getting on. Cheers. Have a great one.